Hello boys and girls, Den here. Sports fans, welcome everybody, JDOD. So I'm here with the one and only PJ, the man who knows everything there is to know about Infor, at least that's my impression. And uh, we're here on the second day of Inform 2012. PJ, what are your impressions of this company? What are we, what are we learning today that we didn't know before? Well, uh, it definitely is a new old Infor. Yeah. Uh, basically, without trying to, to sound derogatory, but I remember your tweet yesterday when you were asking whether this is a mere lipstick on a pig or whether this is a new brand pig. new pig. Yeah. Well, I would say it's somewhere in between. Maybe, let's say, this would be a pig with a significant uh, plastic surgery and maybe even some transplant of some uh, vital organ, let's say liver or maybe even heart. Right, right, right. You know. so, so, you know, you, you've, you've written extensively about the history of this company, where they've come from, where they are at this point in time. What would you say is um, fundamentally different today from perhaps what there was um, a few years ago? Well, one really have to look hard. There are, there are lots of things, that some things have remained uh, similar even under this new management. Right. So one theme that I've always heard from uh, even former uh, info management was uh, the industry focus. And really, uh, that is a common thread that in most of these acquired, let's say, 40 plus ERP products, there were some, uh, most of them were really in, uh, focused and they had really strong uh, functional right characteristics in some industry. Let's mention, mention adage right. in uh, process industries, uh, food, uh, milk, uh, meat packers and all that stuff. Ban, yeah. you know, classic ban was always strong in uh, complex district, dis discrete manufacturing, engineer to order, uh, project based uh, yeah. manufacturing, something that even SAP couldn't match up and maybe even not even nowadays sure. can match up. Unfortunately, some of these products came really on outdated technologies, mm. and uh, that was the the problem for Infor. Uh, the previous management and and uh, technical stuff, they even some of their ideas have still remained in this uh, crucial Infor Ion uh, mm. technology, mm. such as this open uh, document-based uh, exchange. Mm. Mm. What has changed is now that. Uh, Charles Phillips and his lieutenants from Oracle, they come with lots of experience with mm. the acquisitions and also trying to do some, uh, make some sense out of Oracle's acquisitions and, and come up with the fusion. Mm. They might have even learned by some mistakes that were done sure. there, so they know how to avoid that, uh, those mistakes here. And they really exude the confidence and they seem to know what they are doing. Mm. So PJ, let's talk about the mixture of the old and new and how that's working out. I mean, what are you seeing here? Well, Infor had to do that in, in, in a couple of steps. Uh, first, some of these products that it acquired were real uh, jewels mm. and uh, they, were relative, they were not that outdated and they still had a good functionality. Mm. So for them, there was low hanging fruit mm. on picking uh, winners and, and losers. So. Mm. While they will not publicly come out and say who the winners or losers are, I would say that uh, former Ban or whatever it is now, Info10 uh, ERP Enterprise and Sightline, which is now Business Edition and Visual and uh, Edge and Sun Systems uh, Financials and Enterprise Asset Management, these are apparent straight shots where the customers are really on the latest. Uh, or at least contemporary technologies, and will be fairly easy for them to leverage this ION mm -hmm. integration and all, and uh, workspace and all that kind of stuff. Now, for the rest of these uh, products, uh, the only way for Infor to do something really meaningful and, and to be able to keep them in the fold without uh, difficult upgrades and all that is, and also to maintain platform neutrality, because we are talking about progress-based products, about Oracle-based products, mm. but IBM-based products, uh, AXS 400 or yeah. System I IBM products, it was to be that so-called lightweight mm. messaging-based and document-based mm. integration, mm. which mm. makes in, in, I mean, upgrades relatively mm. easier when mm. you're not dealing with the I think they try data. and make it sound a little bit too easy, to be honest, so, so it, we'll see, we'll see. It certainly is not too easy because sure. yesterday at, at some breakout session, the, the expert in the workspace uh, admitted that uh, 
there are two preconditions for some outdated or old ERP product how to be able to leverage right, right. in for workspace. So one precondition is the product will have somehow to be web enabled. Yeah. The other one, these people will have to come up with a context engine. Yeah. So that, that workspace can yeah, yeah. can work and provide you all these nice cool social things, okay. uh, uh, context based uh, analytics yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So yes, uh, even as my article that you that you recently read uh, points out, there are lots of caveats. Sure. But at least Infor is working and, and trying to alienate. And my overall impression is Infor should be really doing fine only if they can shore up and make sure that their current install base is still here and here and they, that they can even bring some of the customers who are no longer on, on context, bring them back. Right, right. And then if they even manage to sell some new well, that would be then something, th wouldn't that it? That would be really a nice yeah. cake. So for that reason, I think uh, Info should be in, in a good position to service its debt and uh, move forward, to, go, yeah. to move forward, go public or, or whatever. Well, all good stuff, PJ. Thank you very much indeed no. for your time. Take care. <laughs> Thanks. Happy to help.